125, chapter 9 on WANs. Uh, end of this chapter, we should have some familiarity with WAN technologies, and we'll also then have some working knowledge of some routers routing protocols. Uh, so let's take a look at the first section here on WAN essentials. Uh, WAN, wider network, this is a network traversing some distance, usually connecting uh, networks at businesses, lands, that kind of thing. Um, the transmission method between really depends on the business needs. So I have a real kind of generic diagram here showing you, you know, various parts of a company and the WAN technology is what's connecting them. Yes, and it really depends on the company, the distance, the bandwidth needed on maybe what technologies get used and or what technologies are available. Uh, so that's typically why they show a cloud here because it could be a variety of things connecting. Uh, even in this particular company, there might be one technology used here, a different one here, a different one here, and even a different one here, depending on bandwidth and need and availability, uh, along with distance in there too. So WAN and LAN differences. Let's take a look. Um, there are some similarities and differences. So I tried to kind of put them in a chart form here to take a look. With LANs, LANs are really focused on connecting nodes, workstations, servers, printers, IP phones, that sort of thing, in a single business, uh, single floor, single building kind of thing. Meanwhile, WANs are used to connect networks together. So a network in, you know, one city and a network of a company in a different city connecting those two together. So they're not so much worried about connecting individual nodes as they are connecting the network at one city site to a network at another city site. They are going to differ layer one and two technologies of the OSI model, uh, different access methods, that sort of thing. But they are going to use the same protocols, layer 3 and higher, typically. Uh, we're typically going to have IP address, TCP, etc. as we move layer 3, 4, and so forth up the protocol stack. Uh, that typically is the case. LANs are typically owned by the company itself. Uh, think about the network in your house that's owned by you. Uh, network in a business is typically the, the equipment in that building is purchased by that company to connect together the company computers and phones and things in that building. Meanwhile, WANs, on the other hand, we are typically renting or leasing those connections between, you know, the Harrisburg site and the Philadelphia site. We're typically leasing or renting that connection between those two sites. Um, and it's usually from a network service provider. You know, some of the, the big names, you know, AT&T, Verizon, Comcast, those sorts of things would be the providers that can connect our sites together. So here in the book, I think they have a picture of, you know, a LAN is typically connecting together devices in a business or in a building. Meanwhile, a WAN is going to connect together sites. And it might use a variety of techniques. It might use a variety of different techniques, but it's designed to connect those sites together. With uh, our WANs, we have some equipment that's going to get used for connecting. Um, if we have DSL or cable modem or DSL or in cable internet, we're typically going to have a modem. This is the device that's going to modulate and demodulate signals uh, from your network to their network. We also run into some terms called DTE and DCE, data terminal equipment and data communications equipment. The DTE is the customer's endpoint device on the WAN. Uh, this is typically going to communicate on the LAN is usually owned by the customer. Meanwhile, the DCE, data communications equipment, is the carrier's endpoint device for the WAN. This is typically uh, owned by the ISP. So if we take a look here, if we have, you know, in our, our house, if you will, we have our own little router that we're using. This is all, you know, the cabling, the, the, that router that we have inside of our house is all owned by us and our responsibility. Meanwhile, the modem that they give us to connect to their network is typically their responsibility. It's typically owned by them, typically their responsibility to replace, upgrade, etc. cetera. Um, and that's where we have this divider, the DTE and the DCE. The customer premise equipment uh, is the, the equipment located at the customer's site. This is usually under the um, supervision and maintenance and repair of your network admin at that site. Uh, they're typically responsible for keeping those, those devices functioning and keeping the WAN connection working. 
you know, the, 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 the network at that site, as well as the connection to maybe other sites in the company. That's typically the uh, network admin's job. We run into the term DMARC, demarcation point. This is where the carrier's responsibility ends and the customer's responsibility begins. Um, as a, a network admin, whether it be for your house or a company, it's really important to know where that point is. Where does the uh, provider's equipment end and ours begins? And then who who owns each of those pieces and who's responsible for each of those pieces it's really important to know that to know well, okay it's on this side of it i need to troubleshoot fix repair upgrade etc it's on that side i need to call them they need to come out here repair fix etc upgrade if you will um, important to know that so in a network if we have a home here the let's say i do have like a dsl or cable kind of thing the the box at the side of the house if you will is typically uh the that point where the provider's equipment comes into there and then as it leaves that box and comes into our house it's now our equipment and it's usually typically the point where the, the dividing line is um we often have a network interface unit this is where that you know that kind of connection handoff occurs from the provider's equipment to your equipment um, network interface unit NI, niu or nid this is the demarcation point that connects the isp local loop to our network the customer's network if you will sometimes this includes a smart jack uh, smart jack is a piece of equipment where the provider can communicate with to know the status of the link is it functioning is it not functioning um, if i were to call them and ask for help they could communicate with this to find out is it working you know from their network up to this point in in the system um, a lot of times that can be used to check on uh, functionality here would be a network interface unit for something like a phone provider and typically if i open this box you find you know the uh the provider's network comes into here and then the wires in here go into the house so this right here would be a dividing line of like who owns what you know utility access over here customer access over here kind of thing um here's more uh, more um, network interface units again you would need to know which which piece in here am i responsible for Here's a smart jack. Now these are older like T1 kind of things, but a lot of your WAN connections from a provider have something like this that they can communicate with to know is it functioning to that point. You might run into what are called line drivers. These are essentially repeaters for a WAN signal, and these can come in copper and or fiber uh, variations. And really it's just a signal booster from the provider to the site, to the, to the customer site. Um, here are some examples of copper line drivers, repeaters, if you will, boosting that signal out to a site. Here's a fiber line driver. Again, sending that signal, boosting that signal out to the customer site. We can also run into things that are called CSU DSU. CSU DSU, um, I always like to think of this as kind of a fancy, fancy name for a modem, almost like a WAN modem, if you will. That's the kind of thing it is. So CSU DSU, Channel Service Unit, Data Service Unit. Uh, this is typically placed the customer's side of the DMARC um, between the, the DMARC and the first router, the first firewall router at that site. The CSU is responsible for connection to the telecommunication network, and the DSU is responsible for manning the inter interface with the DTE, our side of the network, if you will. Um, and again, think of this as a modem for an entire LAN, modem for entire LAN. Old school CSU DSU would look like this. This would be like a, a T1 CSU DSU. Um, the, the T1 line will plug into this, and then you would use these serial cables to connect into your router and away you would go. And this was acting as the WAN modem, if you will, uh, modem for the entire LAN. More modern equipment, that whole unit here, circuitry kind of got shrunk down to a module that was slide into a router and this is actually a t1 dsu csu if you were to zoom in and look at that um so the t1 line could actually plug right into this router taking the place of all take, taking the place of all this equipment here but essentially that is your connection from the provider into your network that is essentially like your wan modem the modem for the entire lan at that site uh csu dsu that's a term you, you run into or you might see so something to be familiar with again and the familiar is the key. We'll come back in the next one and start looking at routers.